good children, come on, gather around now, my oodles of noodles. Come on, today we're going to be discussing a tale of magical journey involving harrowing love and loss and a battle amongst dear brothers and oh, a dramatic stuff and a happy ending maybe even. What is a happy ending in real life? I, fucking tell me, you little shit. Anyways, let us first travel back to the beginning. Meet Jake. Jake from State Farm and Patty. Uh, veggie me, Patty. In high school. They're in high school. Teacher from Advanced Math Super 7 writes a big hard problem on the whiteboard and. Patty fucking solves that shit! <laughs> what is this right? Like, Pantera? Jake just walks up to Patty and he's like, Dude, you could probably write some fucking crazy math pattern grooves. You wanna be a band? And then Patty was all like, then Patty got his cousin to play bass, they moved Jake over to vocals, and they found a guitarist Charlie and drummer Cam on a Craigslist personals ad titled <laughs> Fresh Young Little Boys Looking for More Fresh Young Little Boys Who Can Bang Their Fat Heads Up and Down Quickly and Slowly All Night Long To Metal Music! What is so they move into an apartment together and make their very own homegrown album called The Fantasy of Fat. You ever been really thirsty on a hot day and you just think, wow, man, uh... And then, and then you buy one from the store and you drink it and you're all like, mm -hmm. that's the fantasy effect. Because this album, for me at least, was the refreshing cool drink of fresh water, or rather orange purple soda, that I needed in life. It starts slow, calm and pretty, yet ominous, suspiciously warning you of the maelstrom that's on its way. And right when you find your inner zen, you get this whole fucking album, twisty, chaotic, tap to shreds, sweep the taps, chugs, breakdowns, chug downs, down tempo, chugs, fuck downs, chug, fucks downs, and all while having a relatable production feel to me, which was sounding like total asshole. The production value of this album was in its strong suit. It was done on Mixpad by high schoolers. It was done on fucking Mixpad! Off in fucking Minnesota, their high school talent should look like this! God! It's so fucking awesome! Yeah, sure, it sounds a little scratchy, so it sounds a little fuzzy to the ears, but who fucking cares if the fish tank is shitty when the fish inside is a sexy masterpiece? It's the real thing. It's not overly processed. It's fucking... I fucking love it! Up next, the next album is Exist. Exit. Bathroom Exit. You wanna go off and have yourself a little pee break in between the Shreddy album and the Feelsy album? Go right ahead. This album chugs a metric dick ton! Jake the American Dragon even said right here in an interview, he's like, it lacked body, depth, it sucked. And he even had to write all the drums, because apparently Cam didn't write even shit. Non-cohesive, like mixing ketchup and... Cereal. All right, before we talk about the third album, we ought to talk about some other shit. Jake the vocalist had child abuse, he had drug abuse, he had relationship abuse. A girlfriend that fucking Captain America tosses a China symbol at you and slices your artery open and you bleed forever. He bled for three days! That's literally as long as Jesus Christ was dead! This landed him in the hospital, but he was still with the same girl for three more years. We're exactly trying to get out here. He's seen some shit, okay? He's... We you know who else has seen some shit? That's right, kids. More drugs! Yeah, LSD specifically. He credits his recovery from drugs and maybe even like his entire survival off of therapeutic LSD. He got a whole new outlook on life and he says it worked for him. His mouth turned into a faucet of music, of creative material fueled by all of his experience. Okay, now where am I going with this? What's the point? Lyrically, the next album is gonna be written off of just his two years of life living. Jake from State Farmers gets to reach people now. He gets to create that cure in music that he needed when he needed help. And then not wanting to go on tour, the drummer leaves the band and pisses off Charlie. Jake on stage looks at Charlie and says, Man, you gotta be careful who you're friends with and stuff. Which apparently made Charlie visibly upset. Jake says he was forced to actually ride a different bus with a different band to the rest of the shows until they got home. And then when they got home and unpacked their shit, Charlie just drove off. Faster than a daddy who just needs to go out to get cigarettes. He'll be right back. That was the last time they ever saw Charlie. So Jake from State Farm and Veggie Meat Patty and Francis, the cousin bass player, kicked out Cam and they replaced him with Nick Jonas, the drummer who could drum. And finally the third album happened. And they all live happily ever after. It was everything they wanted. They were, they felt unified together. They felt comfortable to experiment and try new things musically. Like to dim the lights, light a few candles, and just let the night melt away. That I mean to make an album that they all really like. Okay, so here we are. The story's told. You're caught, you're all caught up. You know, like, you know these peeps as well as I do. I'm gonna start the calculations and the breakdowns and then I'll regurgitate this shit into you guys in a step-by-step -step format so you can maybe look at your own reflection one day and, s and see your own reflection. Although you might not like what you see. Oh! Burn! Fucking burn! So you're basically just gonna act like a drunk homeless man who's begging for money. You think he's part for money, I just need a dollar and Oh, and then he starts vomiting, like, uncontrollably. I just need a dollar and a <laughs> And 
next step, step two is a. Uh, oh, hey, look, marching band. But is, is that guy have a. Where's the snare? Where's the snare? <laughs> Step three, sacrifice a goat and a virgin to summon a demon. A big old scary demon. Now sacrifice that pussy demon and five dollars and you'll get the next rip which is like way more evil. It's like, it's like Darth Vader and Lady Voldemort raised baby Hitler from day one. So he's still just as evil but he didn't have like poop fetishes and like fucking weird chronic flatulence. <laughs> And Tinkerbell always starts step five. All right, you're gonna climb up and back down your favorite scale, Mount, Mount McFavorite scale. If you don't want a boring as nuts chorus, then start doing picky push-ups. Come on, picky, you can do it, it's on you, buddy. Step A is to play a solo, and there you go. There's all the instructions on the screen. I don't gotta say shit. Fuck. You. Can I get a couple evil tappy? This evil breakdown includes one really long pause, and then some flaming parts. There's one alternate picking part, but I don't know what to do after. Oh, hey, look at that! It's the marching band people! It's okay, take it away, marching band! <laughs> Strike a fucking open note, let it ring out, and just let the, you know, let the dust settle. Imagine all the dust. <laughs> What lies await beyond the dust? Beyond the dust that settles. It's it's a oh, it's a fucking marching band guy who adopted the wrong instrument. He's like Gwyneth Paltrow when she tried to go adopt a midnight snack from the fridge when she got up and she was hungry, but she only found a baby on accident. At least she named it after the snack she never ate. <laughs> Shredding to the face! <laughs> okay, well, the next step, my arm hurts. Controls for copies of shit. <laughs> shit, whoa, we're done! That's cool! We finished the song. You guys like t shirts? I bet you're wearing one right now. Ha, ah, yeah. You like us on social media? You know how to find us? Of course you do. What are you fucking in fourth grade? It's social media. Hey, start you're the song already! Right Alright, fine. Well, fucking, here's our new song Reef. Lectures, lections, reef. Oh, uh, uh, God. <laughs>